Hey guys, it's Abby with The Bead Place and beadplace.net and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this really fun braided bling wrap bracelet. All right, so the materials that you'll need are three yards of our vegan suede. It's a lot stronger than regular suede. It's a lot prettier too. You'll also need about two and a half inches of the Big Daddy Swarovski rhinestone chain. Links will be in the description with the exact size and product information. Um, but this is approximately 10 links that we're using. You can use whatever you want, but 10 links is what comes in the kit. So the next thing that you'll need is one yard of the 26 gauge craft wire. Um, this is gold because I'm going to use gold with the mint. You will need clasp toggle for me because that's what I like to use because it's easy to get on and off a few jump rings tape measure two chain nose pliers and one flush cutter to cut the wire so I have three one yard lengths of my vegan suede here what I'm gonna do is Hold them all at about the same length, close to the end, and tie an overhand knot. So I'm gonna make a loop, then I'm gonna bring the tail end through that loop. And leave a little bit of tail because it looks kind of cute. Don't trim them. And then that way we don't have to put glue on the knot. So you can kind of straighten out your knot a little bit so that it looks nice, twist the little cords in the right direction, pull on each of the ends individually, and that'll really snug up your knot, and then pull down here individually, and that'll do the same. Cool. Okay, now is the most time consuming part of the whole project. We are going to braid this entire piece. Now, this is just a simple three strand braid. If you want, you can tape it to your table, tape it to a surface, put it on a clipboard, whatever you want. I prefer to just hold it while I braid and I can get a consistent tension that way, but do what's comfortable for you. The other thing that I want to mention to you is keep your, um, keep your cords flat while we're braiding. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the braid and show you what I'm talking about. So the three strand braid is just where you take one side and bring it to the middle, then take the other side and bring it to the middle. So I'm keeping these braids flat. So you see how it's nice and spread out that way. I'm not crossing the cord over. You see how the cord is twisting when I'm doing that? I'm not doing that when I complete the braid. I'm gonna keep it flat and just move it over to the center and keep it flat like that. So I'm keeping it flat and I'm going to braid this entire entire cord shouldn't take you too long okay so when you have about this much left what we're gonna do is tie another one of those overhand knots so hold all of your ends together make a little loop bring your ends through that twisted loop just like so tighten it pull all of your individual ends and we have a big long braided cord give it a little bit of a stretch and what this does is it kind of evens out your braids the suede is a little bit bouncy so just give it a little bit of a pull like this this make a cute headband for a hippie I'm not a hippie so I'm not gonna wear it as a headband but wouldn't that be cute so now what we're gonna do before we do the pretty part we are going to size it on your wrist now you're probably wondering why did I cut it a yard why didn't I measure it to my wrist well here's why we all braid at different tensions. So depending on how stressed or relaxed you are that day, you could have a braid that is very short or very long, all starting with one yard lengths. So that being said, starting at a one yard length is a good kind of rule of thumb for a wrap bracelet like this. So what we're gonna do is wrap it around your wrist. It usually goes around mine four times and then we have a little bit of extra play. 
So that extra play is just gonna hang like a little tassel. You can of course adjust your knots if you don't want little tassels, um, but I like to have little tassels on my bracelet. So figure out where you're gonna place your jump rings and where your clasp is. So right where my fingers are here, that's about where I'm gonna place my jump rings. So when you're placing your jump rings, what you want to do is hook your jump ring actually through two of the plies of the braid rather than just one, and that's gonna make it a heck ton more secure. And yes, Becky, I said heck ton in the video. She was giving me trouble for it. So we are going to open a jump ring. Remember, anytime you open a jump ring, what are you going to do? You are going to hold the break so that it's at 12 o'clock and open your jump ring in this direction, not this direction. So like this, and not like this. So this is a no-no, this is what we're gonna do. Then we can get it closed back in its original position. So what you're gonna do is open your jump ring just wide enough to slip through two of the plies of the braids, slip it through two of the plies of the braids like that. You see how it's going through two of the plies like that and not just the one. So my jump ring's on this side, not this side. So the side that has two plies, the two ply toilet paper. So we're gonna hook the clasp in. Now start with your ring side of the toggle if you're using a toggle and then close it and then we'll go in and do the bar side. So I can kind of remember where I had it, but what you'll probably wanna do is wrap it around your wrist again and figure out if you need to add two jump rings or three jump rings instead of just the one for the bar side. Anytime you're adding extra jump rings, you wanna do it to the bar side rather than the ring side, and that's gonna make it easier for you to get the bracelet on and off. So. Make sure that you are hooking the jump ring in to the correct side of the cord. So I just pre-opened my jump ring. Notice how my clasp is hanging down. So I'm going to keep my braid straight and then again, hang my ring side down so that it doesn't, um, so that it doesn't twist while the bracelet's on, so that it lays flat and it's comfortable. So hook your jump ring in, making sure you're going through two plies of the braid. You're gonna put the bar side on, set it up in your chain nose pliers again, and close it. So anytime we close a jump ring, you're always not only gonna look from this direction, but you're gonna turn it up and check from this direction and make sure it's closed all the way. We don't want anything that could catch on your clothing, um, anything that could slip out. And if your jump ring isn't closed all the way, what could happen is you'll have those little sharp edges and that's gonna wear at the suede and it's also gonna wear at your clasp as well. So make sure it's closed all the way. It'll be more comfortable and more secure. So we have a really cool bracelet now, but we wanna make it even prettier. And how we're gonna do that is we are gonna add some rhinestone chain. So wrap the bracelet around your wrist and figure out where you wanna place your rhinestone chain. So I'm gonna put mine on. And what I'm gonna do is slide it so that the clasp is to the outside of my wrist. And then, because the toggles are hanging on the outside of my wrist, I know that I have it the way I want it. So I'm gonna pick just one of these and figure out that that is where I wanna place my rhinestone chain. Doesn't matter which one at all, just know that that spot is where you're placing your rhinestone chain. So if you have a marker, you can mark underneath it. I'm just gonna wing it. I'm gonna kinda of grab that spot and know that that's where I wanna put it. The other thing that you can do is just tuck your wire, the end of your wire into that spot So just tuck it and you know that that's where you wanna start your rhinestone chain. So we're gonna take the bracelet off, pay attention to which direction we're gonna work. And now what we're gonna do is start wrapping the rhinestone chain on. So we are going to lay the chain across the surface of the wire. And basically what we're gonna do is we are going to hold about an inch of the one yard length of wire out 
And this is just gonna be what we grab onto to help brace ourselves. So we're gonna grab it about an inch out. And then what we're gonna do is start coiling. So you can start with that one inch and coil that around. And essentially what we're doing is we're just making coils between the rhinestone links in order to secure the links down onto the braid. So coil once around with the short piece or hang on to the short piece and then start coiling with the longer piece. So I'm gonna take the longer piece and just coil around three times. So I'm gonna go around one, I've already done one, so I'm gonna do two and now three. So it's coiled on just like this. Let me see if we can focus in a little bit. See, and now we're gonna move on to the next section. So your wire is gonna come across the back and around, and then it's gonna come between the second and the third rhinestone space, link, cup, whatever we call it. So do that one three times as well. So coil around one, two, and now three. Now we're gonna bring it across the back and then into the next one. So one, two, and now three. Now you can be as messy or neat as you want. I particularly like these bracelets when they're a bit messier, just because I think it looks kind of bohemian and chic, um, but you can do it however you'd like. So, go to the next one, one, two, three, and then work all the way to the end of the bracelet like this. Okay, so I've just gone around three times on the last rhinestone dangle. I'm gonna bring it around three more times and work your way back to the other side of the bracelet. So this one should have six. I'm gonna bring it around the back and then go around this one three more times. So around the back, one, two, three, and then skip to the next one. One, two, three, skip to the next one. One, two, three, and so on and so forth. All right, so if you have a lot of extra wire, what you can do is just coil all the way down to the end or just cut it off. I think what I'm gonna do is just wrap one more time down, see if I can fit it in. And then what we're gonna do is tuck our tail ends. Oh, almost, oh well, I'll stop it a little shy. So what we're gonna do is tuck our tail ends in. So what I like to do is just wrap it around until it's very short and then use one of my chain nose pliers to just kind of stab it beneath, <laughs> um, either beneath your wire or um, kind of in between your uh, suede and the cup chain. So if you want, you can just cut it flush and hope that it doesn't scratch you, but I'm gonna try to kind of tuck it beneath the chain. and I have done so. And so if you want, you can use the back of your pliers to kind of press it further down. You don't wanna use the metal part of the pliers to press it because you could slip and end up kind of scratching any plating off of the wire um, or just kind of injuring yourself. So the soft kind of coated end to the tool is a great part of the tool that is um, undervalued. You can use it to just kind of almost burnish the, the end down. So I'm gonna do the same to this side. So I'm going to just kind of tuck it in and you see how I've kind of, well, let's see if it'll focus, focus, nah. Anyway, we're just gonna tuck it in beneath the chain and kind of in between and then use the back part of your tool to just press it into place. There we go, perfect. And now what you're gonna do is use your fingers to kind of just gently put a curve in this section of the wire, and then it's gonna sit comfortably on your wrist. So I'll just take this 
beautiful expensive bracelet that I have on off so I can do a nice demonstration for you you just place it on your wrist and then wrap around and then secure fashion the toggle and we have an awesome wrap around braided blingy bracelet. Add charms if you want, add more sections of bling, wire, whatever you wanna do. Um, but all the materials can be found at beadplace.net. Uh, there will be a link to the kit in the description, um, plus all the tools and materials that we used if you'd like to purchase them individually. If you enjoyed this watch, or if you enjoyed watching this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. We put out new videos very frequently. If you have any questions, comment down below post pictures of what you made to our Facebook page and as always thank you so much for watching